to kick off episode number two, we're going to look at all of the transfers that happened in season number two, starting off with the players that have left the club, the first of which was Carlin Grant. He's a player that wasn't in or around my first team squad, really. Couldn't get in, asked for a transfer. Sheffield United came along with £12 million and we decided to cash in whilst we could. The other player to leave this season was Wendell. Now you would have heard me say at the end of the last episode I was going to give him a chance in the Premier League. It just became very clear very quickly that he wasn't going to be cut out for it. Stuttgart came in with an offer of £1.5 million. We, I think, only paid £2.5 to £3 million for him. So we cut our losses and we allowed him to move. So we had kind of recouped around £14.5, £15 million. Pounds. We added that to the 39 already in the transfer budget and it meant that we had about 55 million pounds to spend and spend it we did now bear with me there are quite a few of these as we go through them so let's kick things off with Shola Shortire the FM23 wonder kid who is now an FM24 wonder kid and the first of our youth kind of project shall we say you're going to see there's a bit of a pattern here as we go through to kind of bring the average age of the squad down. Now Shola Shortire is a lethal player with quick pace, quick acceleration, good dribbling, finishing and first touch. Hopefully we can bed him into the first team and he'll become a bit of a star. The next player to come in was Nasi Anuva. He's another previous FM wonder kid. Used to be at Ajax. Has bounced around a bit at Trabant Spore and 20. And now we have picked him up to plug in on the left hand side of our attack. The next player was Joe Goncalves. He's a goalkeeper who we only bought him really to be a bit of competition for Palmer. He ended up beating Palmer and taking his number one jersey. The next player was Jamal Lascelles. Free transfer from Newcastle. Absolute no-brainer. Premier League experience. Solid defender. Nelson Wiper was the next one to come in. We paid around £6 million to FC Mines in Germany picked him up and he could be an absolute star in this save 20 years old an absolute bargain in the making by the looks of things the next player was Ainsley Maitland-Niles now we needed a player who was versatile could play a number of positions and was English and this was the player that we stumbled upon three million pounds brought him back to England from Leon, and I think it's an absolute sound purchase the next player to come in was Amari Forson, another Manchester United wonder kid, another one who can play in a number of positions, whether it be in midfield or in the wide positions, and one with a big future, hopefully. The next one to come in was from Manchester City, so not only are we becoming a youth kind of movement, but a Manchester youth movement. This Norwegian has got, hopefully, every chance of becoming a first teamer for the entirety of the save. He looks the part. We paid £7.5 million to get him from Manchester City. And I think he could go on and be a bit of a star. And the final player to come in in season number two was Rob Holding. They paired up with Lascelles. And obviously we already have Rocha and we have a number of other players who could play as centre-back. We now have a lot of experience at centre-back. So hopefully with the players that we bought in, we will have a good chance of having at least a good defence as we go into season two. So let's find out, did the players have the impact that we needed? So this season, as a Premier League team, we entered the Carabao Cup in the second round. And unfortunately, that would be the only round as we were drawn against Crystal Palace in the second round and we lost 5-2. In the FA Cup, we were joining the third round where we were paired off against Sunderland. We would beat them 3-1 in the third round to progress into the fourth round where we would be drawn against Manchester United and unfortunately, we would go out of the FA Cup losing 5-3. So with the Cups out of the way, that only leaves the league to recap on and luckily for us, we managed to finish in 10th place. Now, the board only wanted us to avoid relegation and we did that with flying colours as you can see the three teams that went down finished on 22 28 and 28 we managed to get 52 points in our first season back in the premier league and we got there by playing 38 times we won 15 games we drew seven we lost 16 
did have a minus five goal difference, but we finished on 52 points. And that was joint with established teams such as Crystal Palace and even Newcastle. We did finish 10 points behind Everton, who finished in eighth. And we finished 12 points behind Aston Villa, who finished in the Conference League positions. In terms of the stats, Nelson Wiper got 21 league goals in his first campaign in England, which was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. He has been a standout performer for us in this first season back in the Premier League. So that means we have survived in the first season of the Premier League. We finished in 10th place, which is fantastic. The cup competitions, once again, we got knocked out early, but that was probably a blessing because it meant we could just turn all of our attention to staying in the Premier League. Looking at the finances, as we head into season number three, you can see that we now have a transfer budget of £47.9 million. We have a wage budget of £1 million, and we're pretty much spent to the limit of that. But the overall balance this time is £47 million. So if we were to spend every penny of the transfer budget, the board would pretty much have no money. So once again, it's going to be one of them. Can we raise a little bit of funds by selling a few fringe players just to give us a buffer? And can we spend the £47.9 million? That's going to be the question for season number three. In terms of the club vision in season number two, so our job security is secure. We managed to get a B plus from the board. In terms of the objectives, work within the wage budget, we're on course. Now they only want minimum two-year contracts for first-team players, and they are not judging. In terms of the five-year plan going forwards, again next season, avoid relegation from the Premier League, which hopefully now that we are through the first season of being in the Premier League, that should get easier as we go along. In terms of the board feedback, the board culture, they still want us to play attacking, direct football, make the most of set pieces, play entertaining and counter-attacking football. Their highlights, ple fairly pleased, not, not pleased, fairly pleased with the quality of pressing on display using the Geigen Press. Pleased with the level of support in the squad. Pleased with the 4-2 Premier League victory over Southampton. They were disappointed about the 1-0 defeat against Crystal Palace, the 3-1 defeat against Tottenham, them. and the 4-3 defeat against Manchester United just shows you how far we've come when the board are disappointed to lose to Manchester United. In terms of the supporter feedback, they pretty much won all of the same things from the culture. In terms of the expectations, be competitive against Villa, get the better of our rivals Birmingham and then be more competitive against Wolves if we happen to play against them. So, um, all in all, I think that's good feedback from a first season in the Premier League. We're securing our job, we're securing the Premier League, and we do have the supporters on side. To round off season number two and start to prepare for season number three, let's go through our first team squad. As always, we're going to do it in two ways of looking at my best 11 and then my assistant's best 11 and see how they match up and see if there are any areas for improvement. So to start us off, we have got Goncalves, Maitland-Niles, Suter, Holding and Paulinho. We then have OK, Kay and Barros. On the left, Nassi and Uvar, Shortire and Bob on the right and then Waper up front that to me is my absolute best 11 we show you some of the players and how they've got on across the season starting off with our brand new striker nelson waper um yeah fantastic he managed to get 23 goals from 36 games in all competitions 21 in 34 in the league he looks like he could go on to be an absolute star nasia nuva he had a good first season at the club also he played in 36 games, had nine goals, five assists. Overall, a 6.68 average rating, but he did play well in the FA Cup. On the other side of the pitch, Bob, he has come in. He has played in 14 games, scoring four goals, providing six assists, and one that has really started to step up on the right-hand side of the pitch. Shola Shortire, he has played in 24 league games, in fact, 22 league games, 24 in total, four goals, six assists. And I think he's one who, as he develops into the save, will become even better as we go along. And then Kayan Barros is in his second season now. He's still developing, still coming along as a player. And he really is starting to find his feet at the club. 
At right back, Paulinho is still developing too. 20 years old now. Made that right-hand side of defence his own. And I think going forwards, he could be a big player in the save. Then we've got Suter, Holding and Maitland-Niles. If we go over to the squad planner, let's have a look at our best 11 according to the assistant manager then. So he's gone with Goncalves. Toffolo, who was a signing that we bought in on a free transfer as a squad piece, not really a major bit of business. We have Rob Holding, Harry Suter, and Maitland Niles on the right, so he just switches the fullback. Kayan Barros, OK Okuzlu, which is the same as what we had. Grady Diangana, Swift, and Bob, and then he had Wiper up front, and Samake is now the player in purple. But also, if you look at the rest of the purples, Anuva, Shortire, Kevin, uh, Paulinho. So we are quite matched up in terms of where the team is i am more willing to give those younger players a first team place sooner rather than later looking at the strengths and weaknesses in the team then so stamina isn't a collective plus point off the ball passing balance bravery pace penalties tackling vision determination in terms of the strengths wipers 21 goals maui has been in good form with a 7.72 in his last five matches Goalkeepers, collective reflexes, defensive depth is good, midfield is good too. So those are just some of the positions and some of the strengths that we have within the team that we already have. So to round off season two then, just to reiterate once again, we are a Premier League team now. We have 52 points. We finished in 10th place, so next season we will look to build upon that and also maybe have a bit more of success in the Cups. Right then, if you're still with me at this point of the video, firstly, a big thank you. Secondly, if you could hit the like and subscribe to the channel, I really would appreciate it. Cannot thank you all enough for helping the channel to grow. And it's all because of the interaction that comes from yourselves. Before you go, don't forget to check out the rest of the channel. There are other videos such as hints, tips, wonder kids, let's plays, a bit of something for everybody on the channel. But for this one, I'm going to leave it there. Hope to see you on episode three of the West Brom Save very soon.